Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video I'm going to tell you guys all the math I use on a daily basis at my job. I'm 24 years old, so I've only been an engineer for a few years, and I can't confirm if whether or not senior engineers use a lot more math or less math than I do, but I can tell you exactly what it is from my perspective as an entry-level electrical engineer. One of the big questions I had upon graduating was how much of the calculus and signal analysis and controls and electromagnetics and Maxwell's equations and how many of all these things do I actually have to memorize for my job? And the answer is none of them. For better or for worse, if you're one of those people who's like, I can't wait to use all these things on my actual job, you're probably going to be really disappointed. But if you're someone who's like, man, I don't know how on earth I'm going to memorize all these things from all these different classes, you have nothing to worry about. Like me and all of my engineering friends, and I, I know people who work at like even the big companies like Apple and Dell and IBM, and those are more software engineers, but even for like electrical and mechanical purposes, we have never used any of those equations that we've needed in college for those specific classes. That doesn't mean that school is useless. The reason that you actually go through all these different classes and take all these like courses and electives is because you get exposure to all the different fields of engineering that you could potentially want to work in. If you really, really want to use all those equations and you want to get more into like this sort of stuff, then I recommend that you stay in academia like get like a PhD or a master's degree or like you want to stay in a university for as long as possible and that's how you're going to use those equations the longest. Depending on the job or industry that you go into, they're going to have you work in specific programs and you're going to use those programs for the duration of your job. The program that I use every day is a 2D schematic editing tool. And an example of this would be Simulink, PSpice, or Capital XT from Mentor. Simulink is a MATLAB based graphical programming environment for modeling, simulating, and analyzing multi-domain dynamical systems. And that's a very, very fancy way of saying they use block diagrams and you can use those block diagrams to pretty much like view an entire like structure of how something goes from beginning, middle to end. Programs like Simulink and Capital XC are very specific for the company that you're working for depending on what they are actually making. Not all companies will work with this technology. If, if the company is like Bosch, for example, then you might make like a washers or dryers and you need a block diagram format just for those as well. But this is very dependent on the industry you're working in. Capital Harness XC enables harness engineers to create fully detailed, validated, and manufacturing ready harness designs rapidly and easily. I worked as a wire harness engineer for a few years and I would use this program almost every day. And what it allowed me to do was take different aspects of a wire harness that's going to be put into an automotive vehicle and then you can adjust and tweak the wire lengths, the connectors, the, um, the tape or whatever coverings you have over the wires to protect them. There's a lot of different editing tools that you have to make your harness perfect for whatever vehicle it's going to be installed in. Every time a new vehicle with different features is released from really any automotive company, the internal features of that vehicle are going to be slightly different. And as those internal structures slightly change, so do the wire harness and the size of the motors, some of the connectors, like a lot of little things are changing with each new model year of each new vehicle. Once you complete the 2D wire harness and you have everything looking good on the ECAD side, then you create a three-dimensional MCAD structure to test how your new motors or wire harnesses or connectors or components, or whatever new part is going to fit inside that actual car is going to appear to be. Once that's done and everything looks good, we get a physical part made and then you test it in a real world environment and then you see where the limits and tolerances actually are. Sometimes if the wire harness is really small, simple, or you're just using it for testing purposes, you don't have to get a whole technician to build it. I've just soldered it together myself a few times inside of a lab. Usually the harness is actually large and complex and in that situation you want to have a technician work on it because they're going to make it way better with far less imperfections. If the real world testing fails for whatever reason, the new part will be adjusted by increasing or decreasing the wire length, routing it in a different area of the vehicle, or whatever the issue may be, we're going to troubleshoot it and find a solution. This process always involves going back to the 2D drawing, updating it, test it in 3D again, and then repeat the process until you get it right. It's very important to test your two-dimensional schematic in a 3D like CAD software before you actually order the physical part 
because when you're testing it in the 3D software, you're doing it under ideal conditions. And if your wire harness doesn't fit properly or doesn't route like the, the way you want it to, I mean, if there's anything wrong when you're testing it under ideal perfect conditions, then it definitely will not work in the real world where nothing is perfect. And then you just rinse and repeat. Keep on going and going until you have a final product that works the way you want it to and it fits ideally and then everything is ready to go and you move on to the next project. While you're going through engineering, each student is responsible for learning everything. Like when you graduate, you gotta say, I took a class and I passed it with like a decent enough GPA and those classes are gonna be a wide array of everything that that major entails. But when you get to your real job, you're only gonna be given tasks for your specific role. Like they're, they're never gonna give me something that involves using a program I've never seen before because that's not the job that I'm actually like applied for. That's not what they hired me for. So it's like if you're working with radios, they're never going to tell you, can you make this engine in a car work, right? That doesn't make any sense. But while you're in school, you're going to actually have to do that. <laughs> like they're going to give you different classes, different professors are going to give you various assignments that have nothing to do with each other. But on your actual job, everything that you do will in one way or another impact what you're already working on. One other thing that's important is on the actual job, you're never alone. Whereas in school, you're taking exams by yourself and the homework you're doing like kind of groups, but like really everything that you're tested on is individual. But on your real job, there's a team of engineers working on every product. So if something fails, it's never one person's fault, which is thank goodness for that, right? For just liability reasons. But like whatever you do, whatever you make, it'll be quality checked by other people. So there's gonna be at least three or four names on whatever product gets released before it's actually used in the real world. And then if all goes well, a brand new car in the market will have a component or wire harness or motor or whatever part that you made and you get to say, I helped develop that. And that's a really, really cool experience. P-SPICE is a program where you can input individual batteries, resistors, transistors, I mean inductors, capacitors, really any and all analog devices that you can think of and you can put them all inside of one circuit and then you can test that for all the different variables and everything that you really need it to test for. P-SPICE is the program that I use in college most often because as an electrical engineer, we're working very closely with circuits and these are analog circuits. You'll use different programs for digital circuits, which are, they have like and, or, and nor, and like those sort of logic gates. But for specific analog circuits, P-SPICE I've seen is to be the best one possible. In the real world, circuits are never this simple. I mean, this one that you're seeing on your screen right now is a very, very small, a super simple circuit to work with. When you actually get to real life devices, like, like this camera I'm using, for example, to record the video, or your iPhone, or just a regular computer, these circuits are gonna have a lot more digital than they are analog. And when you're working with stuff like that, most of the designs have already been done for you. And that's one thing too, when you get into the real world, very, very seldom are you actually starting from scratch. Like I would say in 99.99% of the cases, you're starting off with a blueprint that has already worked for the previous generation and you're making slight adjustments on that into the new one. Like one way to think about that is how different are the designs of the iPhone right now from the iPhone five years ago? Right, they have the same basic shape, the camera's in pretty much the same place, power buttons are really not that different, but each year there's a very, very slight difference that carries forward, so after five years, you notice a big change. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay fresh, and stay golden.